In this lesson, we're going to talk a little bit about a process that you're going to use pretty frequently during the year, and that's a process called dimensional analysis or factor label. And really, all you need to know is that dimensional analysis is going to be nothing more than a way that's going to allow you to change units in this class. And it's something that we're going to use pretty frequently, so we want to make sure you get really good at it. Uh, the purpose of this, of this lesson is to teach you how to do it, and then tomorrow, whenever you come to class, we're going to actually get some practice with it. So it's really important that you pay attention, get a little practice with this now, kind of understand the basics of this, and then you can ask some questions tomorrow whenever you come to class. Let me just give you a couple examples of when you actually are going to be converting things in chemistry class. And these are all examples that you're probably going to use during the year this year for one reason or another. Uh, the first one is you might very well be measuring in the lab something like milliliters. That's a fairly common volume measurement. Uh, we use our graduated cylinders to measure that. However, many, many times we have to calculate using the units of liters, and we need a way of converting from one to the other. So dimensional analysis will allow us to do that. Towards the end of the year, we're going to be talking about gases, and many times we're going to be measuring our gas units or gas pressures in millimeters of mercury. Quite frequently, though, they need to be converted to units of atmospheres or something called kilopascal in order to use various equations, such as the ideal gas law. And of course, in lab, many times we take our masses of things that are on the balance, we measure those in grams. However, there are times when we need to convert them to a set of units called moles. And you don't need to worry too much right now about what a mole exactly is. We'll talk more about that as the year goes on. But this is a conversion that you're going to have to do. Dimensional analysis allows you to do all of this and much more when it comes to unit conversions. The basis behind any dimensional analysis problem is something called a conversion factor. As a matter of fact, every problem that you do in dimensional analysis is going to involve this thing called a conversion factor. And it sounds really fancy, something super spectacular. It's really not. All you need to know about a conversion factor is that it's a fraction, and that obviously means it has both a numerator and denominator. And in the conversion factor, both the numerator and the denominator are equal quantities. The thing that makes them different from each other is they're going to have different units. So what one of the things is we're going to try to accomplish is understanding how you set up a conversion factor and how that is actually going to be used in your dimensional analysis problem. Let me give you a couple examples of some conversion factors that are actually going to be quite useful to you this year. Uh, we were talking just briefly ago about the fact that you can change milliliters to liters, and the way you accomplish that is using this conversion factor. A thousand milliliters equals one liter. Now you notice at the moment I don't have it set up as a fraction like we said a conversion factor had to be. We're going to get to that in a second. However, if you think about it, if the top and bottom have to be equal to each other, then these are equalities, so these are essentially conversion factors we have here. The second one is a good one whenever you need to convert centimeters to meters or meters to centimeters. Here's one that we can use if we have to change grams to milligrams. And there's this thing called the mole again for something uh, for a particular element of sodium. One mole of sodium has a mass of 22.99 grams. Again, you don't have to get super concerned about what a mole is at the moment. You just need to know that if those two quantities equal each other and they have different units, we can put them into conversion factors. And that's really the whole point of all four of these. You can set them all up as conversion factors simply because they are equal quantities, however they have different units. And of course, you can take these equalities, such as that 1,000 milliliters equals 1 liter, and write it in a fraction, and that's essentially going to be your conversion factor. And of course, there's two ways that we can go about doing this. We can say 1,000 milliliters over 1 liter. That's one conversion factor we can write about right out of that equality. Of course, another one is 1 liter over 1,000 milliliters. Now, the difference in these two conversion factors is obviously the fact that the milliliters and the liters are flip-flopped in each. You might say, well, how am I going to know how to set this problem up? It really depends on the problem you're using, and that's really where the process that I've developed or I've kind of come up with uh, to simplify dimensional analysis has really been helpful to most students. It'll show you which way to set it up, whether you put the liters on top or whether you put the liters on the bottom for this conversion. 
And here they are. Here are the three steps to dimensional analysis success. And I really do mean that, that if you can follow these three simple steps, you are bound to get these problems correct. And it's really important that you master these three steps and see how I use them in the next two examples that we're going to do. The first is to state the given. Every problem has some number or some quantity that you're going to have to convert. It's not only a number, it's also going to be a unit, and it's going to be important for you to make sure you write down both the number and the unit. That's going to be your given. Start with that, obviously. Second thing is we're trying to obviously change units, so we want to do call, what's called canceling the units. And you're going to see how that works here in a second. It's very similar to an algebra problem where if you have something on the top and something on the bottom, when you multiply them in two fractions, something in the numerator, something in the denominator, they will cancel out. And the third step is to actually put the numbers in that correspond to those units. Again, everything you're seeing here is based on that thing that we just looked at called the conversion factor. In particular, steps two and steps three. Those are there's the places where you're going to be setting up your conversion factor. And of course, that's also going to dictate to you which way you're actually going to put that conversion factor. All right, so here's the first problem that we're going to do. 26.3 milliliters of hydrochloric acid is how many liters? And again, this is a problem that would not be uncommon for you to do in a chemistry class. For instance, in Chem 2, we do a process called titration, where you measure a certain quantity of an acid, and you have to convert that to liters before you actually do any calculations with it. So this is a very common calculation in chemistry. One of the things we want to do first is state the given. That is the first step. And in this particular problem, the given is the 26.3 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. That's what we're trying to convert. Uh, it's not a bad idea to kind of get an idea of what unit you're going to. In this case, looks like liters is what we're trying to convert to. And then, of course, once you know where you're starting and where you're going, it's always a good idea to know that conversion. And again, this is one of the conversions I just gave you. It's going to be uh, on your sheet that you're, you'll see, 1,000 milliliters equals 1 liter. That's our conversion factor. So let's go ahead and set the problem up. Again, first step is to state the given. So we're going to write our given, not just the number, but also the units. That is very important for you to do. Make sure you put those units in there because obviously that is the whole point of this, getting rid of one unit going to another. Uh, sometimes you'll see us write those givens over one, just to kind of help us remember that that is the, the, the actual given is the top part, the numerator of our number. Step two was to cancel units. This is where your conversion factor comes in. So I'm going to multiply by a conversion factor. And again, our conversion factor, we already know what it is. We just need to put it in the correct way. And canceling units is where that's all at. If you'll notice... I've got milliliters on the top of my fraction there in the given. So in order to cancel it, I need to put it on the bottom of my conversion factor. And again, this is just like an algebra class that you learned. If you had a quantity or a problem such as A times B over A, well, how do you reduce that down? Well, the numerators multiply together, you get AB. And the denominators multiply together, obviously here you just have A. And that's going to simplify down. The A's cancel. The same thing is going to be true of our units. If you have milliliters on top and milliliters on the bottom, then they're going to cancel out. And you can be left with and put on top whatever unit you're trying to convert to, which is, in this case, liters. Third step is simply to put the numbers in. And again, this is going to be the numbers that come right out of that conversion we knew there. And look at what it says. It says one liter. So we need to make our conversion factor say one liter. The liters is on the top, so that's where the one goes. Our equality says a thousand milliliters, so that's where the one thousand goes with the milliliters. And that's how you set up the problem. If you look at what's left, whenever you solve this now, all you need to do is take 26.3 times one, multiply the numerators, 1 times 1,000 on the bottom, multiply the denominators. 26.3 divided by 1,000 gives you 0 0.0263. And of course, we want to make sure we have some units in here. You did all that process, you'd better convert them. Of course, our units here are liters. 
And that is the answer to our problem. 26.3 milliliters is the same as 0 0.0263 liters. Let's go ahead and try one more problem here, another fairly common type problem. This is actually from a lab that you'll be doing later in the year with the gas laws, and that is taking a measurement for a piece of magnesium, and you'll have to do some conversions with that. Again, if you've always followed those three steps, you're bound to get these problems right. Half the, half, the, half the deal with these is making sure you get them set up correctly, and if you follow those steps, you're going to. First step was to state the given, so again, figure out what your given is in this problem, and it's pretty clearly the 0 0.035 meters of magnesium, and it's not, not a bad idea to figure out where you're trying to convert to. In this case, it looks like centimeters, and again, you have a conversion that's going to convert from centimeters to meters. We know that one meter equals 100 centimeters. It's actually probably something that many of you actually know from somewhere along the line in school. And this particular conversion, again, how do we set it up? Well, that's where setting up the problem comes in and canceling the units. Then you'll know how to set up the, the, factor, the factor label, the conversion factor for this problem. So again, state the given. So now that we know it, we can go with 0 0.035 meters. Again, I'm going to put that over 1 just to remind me that the 0 0.035 meters is on the top part of that particular uh, quantity. Second step is to cancel units. So we'll draw our conversion factor. And again, where do you think we need to put the units in this particular problem? If you said that the meters needs to go on the bottom, you are correct. And again, why are we putting the meters on the bottom? Because we want to have them cancel with what's on top. And we can put centimeters on the top of the conversion factor. All right, third step is to go ahead and put the numbers in. And again, the numbers come right out of our equality. You just need to make your conversion factor say the same thing. So I see one meter, and I notice that the meters is on the bottom of the conversion factor. So one meter in the equality, one meter in the conversion factor. 100 centimeters is in our equality. So I put it in my conversion factor, and that's how you set this problem up. Uh, to solve it, all you need to do is multiply the numerators, 0 0.035 times 100. Multiply the denominators, 1 times 1. Of course, the units, we've kind of already taken care of multiplying them. We can see that they already cancel. And this particular problem, that basically reduces down here to 0 0.035 times 100. It looks like 3.5 centimeters is my answer. And that's what we get for an answer to this problem when we convert. 3.5 centimeters exact same distance as 0 0.035 meters, just a different unit. And so that's pretty much about as simple as dimensional analysis gets. That's the basics. You want to master that basic process before you do too much else with these. And that's really what we want to take some time to focus on tomorrow in class, kind of just mastering this process. And if you feel fairly comfortable with it tomorrow, I'll give you some more problems to try. I have some other additional things for you to work on um, that take this up to another notch that will actually be make this even a little more useful to us as the year goes on. But for tomorrow, what I want you to do, you did get two problems in class today. I want you to try those two problems. Again, what you want to try to focus on is setting up and following that process. If you don't quite understand, that's all right. Try your best. That's the point, to try what you've got here, uh, see if you can apply what you've got. Uh, if you have any questions on anything, obviously tomorrow would be a good day to come to class with those questions because we will be taking the time to go over it. And this is so important here. Be prepared to work so that you can master this process. That's really what it's all about, making sure you master what we're learning here. And before you know it, you're going to be pretty good at these. Most, most people find these to be fairly straightforward. We're going to make sure you get to know them.